Lee Selby was considered one of the best fighters to come out of Wales in recent years, with a career that included a world title at featherweight, as well as a solid run at domestic level. He's actually considered by some to be an overachiever. Since he retired quite recently, I figured I would take the opportunity to add him to the retrospective series. Nordic Warrior here, hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to my retrospective boxing series. Today we're going to be looking at the former featherweight champion, Lee Selby from Wales. So Lee Selby turned professional in 2008 after a decent amateur career. In the early part of his career, he had a string of victories against journeymen, mostly by decision, and was developing a reputation as more of a technician than a puncher. He actually had a loss very early in his career against a journeyman in a four-rounder, so a relatively inconsequential loss there. The first major test of his career came against the undefeated British and Commonwealth champion Stephen Smith. Selby completely destroyed Smith, stopping him in the eighth round after a dominant performance. His first title defence he took on the former champion, who was actually robbed of his title against Stephen Smith, John Simpson. Selby once again dominated the fight and stopped Simpson in the fifth round. Interestingly, it seemed as if, as the level of opposition increased, so did Selby's punching power. After an easy stoppage win against Patrick O'Kinney, he took on the tough Irish contender Martin Lindsay, winning the fight by a wide unanimous decision. He then took on the undefeated Romanian contender Viral Simeon, winning by a close unanimous decision in a very competitive fight. He then took on the undefeated Ryan Walsh, once again winning by a wide unanimous decision. He then got a shot at the vacant European title against the veteran Rendell Monroe. Selby destroyed Monroe, stopping him in the sixth round after a dominant performance. He then took on the tough Mexican contender, Romulo Coasicha. Selby dominated the fight, winning by a wide unanimous decision. He then took on the undefeated contender Joel Brunker, stopping him in the ninth round. After beating Brunker, Selby was in line for a shot at the IBF World Featherweight title against the champion Evgeny Gradovic from Russia. The fight took place in London, and going into the fight, Selby was a pretty big underdog, with most people picking Gradovich to beat him. The fight was fairly competitive, but for the most part, Selby was in control. The fight ended in the ninth round due to a clash of heads that opened a cut over Gradovich's eye, and Selby was declared the winner by technical decision, in a fairly big upset. For his first title defence, he travelled over to America and took on the veteran former three-division world champion Fernando Montiel from Mexico. Selby dominated the fight, winning by a wide unanimous decision. His next title defence, he took on the American contender Eric Hunter. Hunter had a reputation for being a dirty fighter, having been disqualified twice in his career. His reputation preceded him, with him getting a point deducted in the seventh round for low blows. Selby won the fight by a wide unanimous decision. For his next fight, Selby moved up in weight for a non-title fight against Andoni Gago, winning by a ninth round stoppage. He then moved back down to featherweight and defended his title against the veteran former WBA champion, Jonathan Victor Barrios from Argentina. Selby dominated the fight, winning by a wide unanimous decision. He then took on the undefeated Mexican contender Eduardo Ramirez, winning by a wide unanimous decision. For his final title defence, he went over to Leeds to take on the undefeated British contender Josh Warrington. Despite travelling to Warrington's home city, Selby was the favourite to win the fight, with most fans and pundits feeling that his size, experience and skill would be too much for the relatively inexperienced Warrington. In a big upset, Warrington went on to dominate the fight, completely outboxing and outworking Selby, en route to a split decision victory, giving Selby the second defeat of his career. Despite being a split decision, it was not a close fight in my opinion. It looked like a very clear win for Warrington. Selby was also cut above both eyes, both from head clashes, and this almost led to the fight getting stopped early, but that never happened. After losing to Warrington, Selby decided to move up to the lightweight division, skipping over super featherweight entirely, clearly showing that Selby must have been absolutely draining himself to make featherweight. His first fight after moving up two divisions was against the American fringe contender, Omar Douglas, for the vacant IBF Intercontinental title, winning by a wide unanimous decision. He then took on the former three-division world champion, Ricky Burns, the fight was somewhat competitive, with Selby doing a decent job of surviving and spoiling, but Burns appeared to land the more effective punches, and had the higher work rate throughout. Officially, Selby won the fight by a very close majority decision, but me personally, I had Ricky Burns winning the fight pretty clearly. Nonetheless, Selby got the decision. After a year away from the ring, 
Selby came back and took on the undefeated Australian contender George Cambosos Jr. The fight was very close early on, and both guys had their moments here and there. However, Cambosos had the higher work rate and finished the fight strongly. Cambosos won the fight by a split decision, giving Selby the third loss of his career. There was some speculation that Selby would retire after the Cambosos fight. Nonetheless, he came back in 2022 and travelled over to Argentina to take on the undefeated Argentinian knockout artist Gustavo Daniel Lemos. Selby looked a shadow of his former self, getting stopped in the fifth round after a very one-sided fight, retiring shortly after. So how good was Lee Selby? How would he have done in today's era, or any era besides his own? Let's talk about it. So Lee Selby was a very interesting fighter in my opinion. One thing that's very important to know is that he was absolutely massive for a featherweight, and I have no idea how he was able to make weight. I think this may have taken a toll on his body, because by the end of his career, his stamina and punch resistance looked severely diminished. Nonetheless, at his prime he was an absolute nightmare for any featherweight due to his height, reach, and awkward style that confused and befuddled most of his opponents early in his career. One thing that I personally believe about Selby too is that he actually had pretty underrated punching power. He had quite a lot of impressive knockouts and stoppages at domestic level, despite not being known as a big puncher, and I think he was one of those fighters who would sometimes fight to the level of his opposition. I do think he was vulnerable to specific styles though. Josh Warrington, who was a great inside fighter, was able to systematically deconstruct him, and I think any world-class pressure fighter with a high volume and work rate would have a good chance to beat him. I think it would have been interesting to see how he would have done at super featherweight earlier in his career, where he would not have had to cut as much weight, because at the time he moved up to lightweight, it was just too late for him to really achieve anything at world level. Like I said before, I personally thought he lost to Ricky Burns very clearly, and he lost to George Cambosos, neither of which were really world-class fighters at the point in their careers where they fought Selby in my opinion. Burns was world class in his prime, but was completely shot when Selby fought him, and Cambosos was still relatively inexperienced at that point. So I'm not convinced that Selby was a serious threat at world level at lightweight. Nonetheless, he would have been a very hard fight for any of today's featherweights in my personal opinion. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Lee Selby. Let me know what you guys think, stay tuned for more retrospective boxing videos. Thanks for watching and God bless.